Welcome engineers. My name is Travis IQ, and today we're talking filtration of traffic, access control list specifically. Let's get started. Let's first start with some definitions. So access control lists, access control lists. You'll probably see these as ACLs, right? ACLs is the common abbreviation for access control list. And within these lists, right, are what are known as access control entries. A-C-E or access, little abbreviation here, control entries. And these are the entries that dictate how the traffic is filtered. So the first thing that we need to know is that access control lists contain these entries, and these entries are generally permit and deny statements. I use the terms permit and deny because they're pretty clear what they do, right? They either permit or deny traffic, traffic. but also this is what we would use in the Cisco CLI, permit and deny. You could use things like allow and block as well. You'll see those in GUIs, graphical user interfaces. And what this is saying is we are allowing or denying or permitting or denying, right, they're equivalent terms, traffic. One other thing that we might be concerned with here is we, we permit or deny the traffic based upon direction. So we would deny traffic inbound or outbound in, let's say, a router. In the examples we'll give in practice, we'll do Cisco CLIs, so Cisco routers. So we can deny traffic inbound, we can deny it, or we can deny traffic outbound. And there are some very specific reasons why you would wanna do one or the other. Mostly computational efficiency, as well as dependent upon the number of interfaces, it might actually logistically be better to deny traffic inbound on let's say the G00 interface here, as opposed to trying to deny it on each of these interfaces outbound. Okay. So what does an access control list look like then, Travis? Well, first of all, these access control lists also have sequentialness. So realistically, if you've actually heard this definition before, um, it's a sequential list of permit and deny statements. And I always point out that it's actually really important, this term right here, the sequentiality of the list, the sequentialness of the list. What does that mean? It means in order, right? One, two, three, four, five. And so as we evaluate traffic, let's say inbound on an interface, what do we do? Well, we have to evaluate the traffic. And the way that we do that is by each list entry, each access control entry, ACE, we evaluate the first access control entry first, the second next, the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. And then if we were to get to the bottom, there is actually a default behavior of these access control lists too. So if I didn't match any of these entries, for example, so if I were saying permitting or denying hosts, right? And I'm gonna I'm going to simplify this even more here, but I'm gonna I'll elaborate on it in a second. If I were to deny the dot one host, deny the dot two host, deny the dot three host, deny dot four, and deny dot five, right? If I were to be, have a source address of dot six, and I were to enter this interface inbound, let's say, and I looked at each one of these entries sequentially, right? So the router R1, this is the device. When I say I, I mean me, the router. If I were to look at this inbound dot six, and I would say, Am I, is this the dot one source? Is it the dot two source? Is it the dot three source? Is it the dot four? And I'm actually doing this sequentially, right? As the router. Is it the dot four or the dot five? And then I say, no, it's none of these. It doesn't match any of these entries. Well, I get to the bottom here and there's actually a default behavior. So I didn't match any, but I still have to do something with the traffic. I either have to permit or deny traffic. And you might think to yourself, well, what's the purpose of the firewall, right? The purpose, what's, what's my be reason for being? 
And the reason for being is to deny or permit traffic, and it's actually to secure the network. That's why we utilize firewalls. And so if I don't know what to do with the traffic, then I should default to a secure behavior. And what a secure behavior is, is denying the traffic. And so we call this an implicit deny, and it's a deny any in the, in the case of standard access control list or deny any any in the case of extended access control list, right? And we call this the implicit deny. Usually, I would say in practice, you actually don't wanna get down here to an implicit deny often or ever. I usually see a lot of implementations where there's actually the, an, an explicit deny any any at the bottom here, deny any. And one of the reasons for that is what you can do is you can log the number of matches. So you can actually get a little bit of, a little bit more information if you explicitly deny, then you can log how many, tra how many pieces of traffic have actually come into this interface and been denied by that explicit deny at the bottom. But if you didn't have this and you were to get to the bottom, there is an implicit deny that denies all traffic because that's what we would call default to secure, right? What happens in the case that something were to make it to the bottom of this list? So it's a sequential list of permit and deny statements with an implicit deny at the bottom. This also does one other thing, which is it, re it then requires you to configure the list with a specific order of operations. What do I mean by this? What I mean is what you usually do, let's say in the case of Cisco access control list, for example, because that's a, uh, an example we'll be using, you would define, and by that I mean name the access control list. So I would say, let's say no underscore Travis. Travs, Travis. So this is the list. That's the first thing I do is name the thing. And then I would add entries. So this is step one. Step two is add access control entries. And step three is place on interface or add to interface with directionality. FACE with direction, inbound or outbound. If you were to flip these two steps here, three and two, and you named the list and then added it to an interface with directionality, so you started filtering with directionality, if you think about it here, maybe stop and think about it, but what you would actually have is only one entry. Remember, you'd have an implicit deny. So all you would have is a deny. So if you added this access control list with no entries inbound on an interface, you would actually be filtering all traffic inbound on that interface and denying all that traffic. That's kind of your classic junior network engineer mistake. Define an access control list name, put it on an interface, and then block all the traffic inbound. Everything goes haywire and everyone asks what happened. When everything goes well as a network engineer, you should know this, no one really cares. It's like getting hot water in the morning. When something doesn't go well and you don't receive your hot water, you're not very happy. That's the plight of a network engineer. Okay, so let's look at some entries then. Let's, let's, let's make some entries here and understand what our access control list entries are doing in, in the context of an access control list. So let's give, give you an entry. Entry one, and we are going to permit 192.168.1.0. This is a network, and so I'm gonna give it a subnet mask. And so this is an entry, right? Again, I haven't given it directionality, but we're just looking at the entry. So what am I doing here? If I look at the entry in this first entry, so we're gonna give it some an order as well. I'm permitting the 192.168.1 network, right? I don't have a host ID here because it's unnecessary because I'm not even looking at these bits. And the subnet mask is defining which bits I'm looking at. Now in a Cisco ACL and in different configurations, you might use a wildcard mask or something like this. But for this example, where we're just showing the access control list and trying to read it explicitly, this is a lot easier to do. So this is my network. 
and this is my subnet mask. And this is actually what's known as a standard access control list. What that means is I'm only filtering source information. Standard access control lists only filter based upon source information. Why am I showing you a simpler access control list than maybe you have seen if you've looked at these before? The reason is length of writing. So I've kind of gotten to the end of my space here. I'll show you one in, in just a second, but I wanted to give a nice explicit example where we're, we're permitting the 192.168.1 network as a source from anywhere. So if I were to draw you a network, and this is the local area network, the LAN, and this is the 192.168.1.0 network slash 24, which is the subnet mask here. And I'm trying to get out to the interwebs, the WAN. I can take, let's call entry one, let's call this the access control list, right? I can call entry one and I can place it inbound on this interface. And I filter all traffic that comes into this interface. If traffic is coming into this interface, into this interface, where is it coming from? There's only one network that I've configured here. It's coming from the 192.168.1 network. If it's coming from this network, that would be the source. And so what I've done with this entry is I've allowed all the 192.168.1 network traffic to enter this interface and be routed by R1, for example. This is, this is fine. What this also means is if someone were to spin up a new network out here, some shadow IT or something like that, new bad network, bad, and try to traverse this router, there are all kinds of issues here, right? But one example would be I could filter it out with, the, with this access control list. Okay, so that's source information, standard access control lists, and what a, a sample of filtering this traffic would look like. You're looking at every packet that comes in here and you're filtering it based upon the source information. Each, each of your packets has source and destination info. If this is not familiar to you, I've got like an OSI model discussion and an encapsulation model discussion in some of my previous videos. Okay, let's go through one more example before we jump into the real world scenarios, right? Where we actually do some configuration. So the next example is what's known as an extended access control list. These are probably the access control lists you're more familiar with. Although I will say that it is more common than you would think to utilize, if you want to call them legacy standard access control lists. I wouldn't even call them legacy. They're just implement implementation based access control list definitions, but older, less complex. The standard access control lists are still used in environments today, I have met and worked with DOD engineers who still deal in standard access control lists to this day. Okay. An extended access control list fil filters traffic based upon source and destination information, as well as protocol and port. So this is IP addressing information. This is protocols like ICMP, and IP, and IGMP, for example. And this is port. This is well-known service, right? Port 20, 21, 22, 23. Why am I giving you ports in order? Because these are all well, very well-known ports. FTP, SSH, Telnet. I could give you another one that isn't in order, right? 443 HTTPS, for example. So we can filter based upon this traffic information. This is all what's known as stateless filtering. We're not looking at any information, any contextual information. All we're looking at is independent of state. We're just looking at that packet and what it says in its header information. Okay. So what we should do here then is show you an example of an access control entry. and how we would read that entry. So we'll do we'll do a deny statement now. Deny TCP. There's another example of a, a protocol denial. 
192.168.1.1.255.255.255.255. So what we're doing here is we're denying TCP with a source address of 192.168.1.1, or we would say from the 192.168.1.1 host. And then the next entry is actually the destination. And so in this case, let's give it an any. We'll just say from this host to any other host with a destination port equal to 23. So what we're saying here is deny the dot one host to telnet to anywhere, any other host. And this is the written version of what I just said there. So if I were to tell you, I want you to deny the dot one host from telnetting to any other host. From telnetting to any other host. Deny the dot one host from telnetting to any other host. If I were to ask you to do that, then this is what the entry would look like. Denying TCP from the 192.168.1.1 host with this subnet mask, which only matches the dot one host, to anywhere with the destination port equal to 23, which is Telnet. You could write in Telnet depending upon the CLI you're working in or some other GUI you're working in. But in this case, that's what I've, that's what I've defined here. We could do another where we deny TCP from the 192.168.1.0 network, 255.255.255.0 to the dot two network, dot two dot zero, 255.255.255.0. And we'll pick a port equal to 80 in this case. So what we've now done is we've denied traffic from the dot one network to the dot two network with a destination port equal to 80. I've actually chosen two clear text protocols here so that it was it is representative of a real access control list entry because we would be denying clear text protocol use in our environment. So these are examples of extended access control lists. Why would we use extended access control lists over their standard access control list counterparts? And I think that you can see the reason we would do this is because they're more granular. You can actually filter out traffic better. And so this is actually a more thorough statement. It filters based upon source information, destination information, destination port number, all of these important criteria. But for now, if you like the content, like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And as always, engineer, break stuff, and have fun.